I feel like birds would have to be one of the coolest animals to own as a kid. They're funny, they have quirky personalities, and they're a great learning experience. And yeah, there's definitely some birds out there that wouldn't make great pets, like magpies. Because, let's be real, they're out here to get us. The Australian ones, anyway. Wah! But let's not focus on the negatives here. There's plenty of good birds out there. For example, budgies, canaries, finches, cockatoos, and most importantly, parrots. Arr. Okay, I'll scrap that. My favorite types of parrots would have to be mangoes, watermelons, and Irish bopping birds. Memes. Bird memes are revolutionary. Let's quickly see what they're all about. Bro, close your eyes. Okay, bro. What do you see? Nothing, bro. That's my life without you, bro. Bro. Potassium in Greece! This one doesn't even need text. When your mum is beating you and all of a sudden you got visitors. <laughs> Look, human. I don't scram. I'm a bunny. I'm a good bunny. Got some bunny seed? When your duckling learns how to swim and you feel accomplished as a duck. <laughs> now why would a lemon want to eat that rock? Hey burp, want some seed? Yes. Whoops. <laughs> you get my point, they're great. Now I'm gonna stop before I turn into a reaction channel. When I was a kid, the type of bird we had was a cockatiel. And remember when I said there were good birds and bad birds? Mine? was both. Normally when you get a bird you go into the pet store, look at all the choices you have and pick the perfect one. Or you could buy from a breeder. The way we got our bird was in a much less conventional way. I was at my grandparents house in the school holidays of 2006 and on this day we just happened to be swimming in the pool. My brothers and I were probably in the pool for about two to three hours and we were about to get out but then. This random colorful bird just flew down to us and tried to drink the pool water. At this time, I had never seen a bird like this before. He had a bright yellow face with bright orange cheeks and his whole body was covered in gray and white feathers. And of course, you can't forget the yellow mohawk. My brother held out his hand towards the bird and it just happened to climb on him. So he helped the bird drink the water properly since he couldn't reach it properly from the edge. The bird seemed tame. My brother didn't really want to hold it for a long time as it was a wild bird, so he placed it on a pool noodle nearby. By this point, one of my grandparents came out and grabbed a net and caught it. Yeah. Hang on, before you call Peter, let me explain. It was probably a good thing we caught him- It was probably a good thing we caught him because- Oh, it was probably a good thing we caught this bird because he was most likely someone's pet that somehow escaped. His owner was probably out there worried sick. No. No! Please stay, Abraham! I'll give you all the bird seed in the world! Don't go! No! We brought him inside and we learned a few things about him. He liked being on your shoulder, he could whistle, he liked to chew earlobes. That was painful. And he even bit my eyelid! He was a savage little bird! If you reach out towards his face, he would viciously attack your hand. But at the same time, he was very tame and he would climb all over you. He was pretty loving. So on this day, we decided to call him Max. There's not really much to it, it's just Max. Mad Max! After looking after him for a few days, we had to do the 10 hour drive home to a different state. We had a long trip ahead of us with this random bird we only just met. We thought the best way to keep him contained on the drive home was put him in a box, and it just happened to be a tomato box. We thought this was the best box as there were heaps of holes around it so it could breathe, and it was pretty high so Max could, you know, stand properly. We placed some food and water in there and put him on the empty seat, and then it was just 10 hours of... <laughs> I can't believe my sweet little boy Abraham is gone. We used to have so much fun. We'd have little tea parties together. I feel so lost without him. It's been a couple of days now. He's been out in the wild all alone. He's probably dead by now. <laughs> yeah, nope, he was in a tomato box getting taken to another state. Oops. One thing that was really entertaining about this car ride home was that Max would chew around the air holes in the cardboard box. Once he made the hole big enough, he would poke his head through. We were sitting in the car for so long, so this was pretty hilarious to us. At one point, he got his head stuck, so I had to push his little beak back in. 
I can't really remember who suggested to keep him as a pet, but we went with it and he was a part of our family now. We eventually bought him a big cage and decked it out with all these accessories such as ladders, mirrors, birdseed treats, and bells. Speaking of food, we'd often hand feed cornflakes to Max in the mornings as a special breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> one time, I got one of my friends to come over and feed Max. It didn't end too well. <laughs> Wanna feed my bird? Oh boy, of course I do! <laughs> Since Max was part of our lives now, everything went on as normal. But here are some random stories that happened over the years. When his cage would get washed, it was our job to look after him inside. He would fly around a lot knocking over heaps of photo frames and crapping everywhere he could. He would even try and eat our curtains as I guess they kind of looked like birdseed. We also used to play this game called What's That Sound? And yes, you would have to say it like that. Basically, there was this little ball that had a bell in it and every time you moved it, it would jingle and you just have to try and get Max to react to it, which he never did. He did not care. Great game. <laughs> One night I was asleep in bed, just dreaming, and then... I heard a huge crash come from outside. I went out of my room to investigate and it turns out the rest of my family heard it too. So we all headed for the back door. I reached for the back door and slid it open. It took a while for my eyes to adjust to the dark light before I could see what was in front of me. It was just Max. His cage was on the floor and the roof was off, but he didn't fly away. He was just sitting in there squawking to get our attention. He was clearly scared of something. And that's when we saw a ghost. I'm just kidding. We never actually found out what happened that night, but we just assumed it was a cat jumping from our barbecue onto the cage to try and eat Max. Needless to say, we fixed his cage and brought him in for the night. He was shook. When we'd go on holidays and couldn't bring Max along, we would give him to our neighbor. They were normally pretty good at looking after our pets. They would feed them and entertain them. However, one fateful day, they took him out of his cage and cleaned it. When we told him it didn't really need to be cleaned. I guess they were trying to do something nice, but you know. Something bad came from this. When he was let out of his cage, he flew outside onto a huge tree. Basically, they just let him escape. To this day, I am still confused on how they got him down from the tree because he would either try and bite you or you get scared or you just fly away. I don't know how any of those things didn't happen. Come on, Max, get down from there. Every single morning, we'd wake up to Max singing some tunes and some random chirps that we did not teach him at all. He just made up his own song, basically. He was a very intellectual bird. <laughs> he was a very confident bird. Let's just say that. A lot of the time, he would stand in front of his mirror and wolf whistle and say the phrase pretty boy a lot. Yeah. Like I said, he was a pretty smart bird, and whenever he needed his food or water refilled, he would scream until someone came. And yes, this was definitely annoying from time to time, but it made our job easier. We always knew he would never go hungry. About four years after bringing Max home, there was a quiet day. We didn't hear him chirp like usual. There was no chirping, whistling, no screaming, and no singing. It was complete silence. That day, we found him at the bottom of the cage not moving. Max had died that night. We don't know the cause of death, but we assumed it was old age as we didn't know how old he was when we first got him. Max was a good bird. I'm glad that all those years ago that we just happened to be in the same place at the same time. If our paths never crossed, he could have just died out there in the wild. And that was the story of my pet bird. Thanks for watching.
A huge thank you goes to Tim Tom for featuring in this video. He's an awesome guy and if you want to check him out, there's a link on the screen and in the description box below.